All right, happy Monday morning, everybody. Mark here from the Gamble Smart Channel. Hope you guys had a wonderful Easter weekend, good holiday. And uh, today is April Fool's Day, but we're not fooling anybody today because we're going to talk about something that we've heard a lot in the comments lately. And I wanted to try to find a clever way to kind of explain it so it can make it a little bit easier to uh, understand what's going on. And that is, how can slot machines be called random but still have a payback percentage set to them? Are they completely rigged? Let's talk about it. All right, let's get started on this, but right before we do, if you are new here, we certainly welcome you. Give us a subscription, thumbs up. We do these daily tips about gambling every single day, Monday through Friday at uh, 8 a.m. Central Time, and we would love to have you. Hope to get you educated so you can become a better gambler, okay? So, today's topic is something that we've been getting a lot of comments on the last couple of weeks, and it's good. I mean, th these are what we want to hear so we know how to explain it to you better, right? So. A lot of people just straight up ask me, are slot machines random? Because you probably listen to some of my videos if you're not new here, and you've heard me say, it's random, it's random, it's random. It's like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. How can it be random but still have a payback percentage? That can't be random. It's a valid point, but let's talk about kind of breaking it down a little bit, okay? So the way slot machines work is that as soon as they are powered on, and we're talking about class three machines here. Okay, class three machines are like the ones you see behind me. You see them in Vegas. You see them in a lot of the bigger casinos. Uh, we're not talking about bingo machines. We're not talking about VLTs or HHRs, all those uh, class two machines. We will do that later on another video. But this one is all about the majority of casinos out there with class three machines. There's a random number generator that fires off as soon as the machine is powered on and it is running constantly, okay, nonstop. And it runs very fast and all it's doing is just cycling through numbers really, really fast, faster than we can even imagine as human beings, okay? Their computers are really fast these days. They can spit out numbers very fast. So, as soon as you hit the spin button, pull the handle, it will stop, and it will pick out a random number for each reel that is on the machine. So if it's like a three reel machine like I have behind me, it'll pick three numbers in rapid succession. Each of those numbers belongs to a symbol on a virtual reel table, which then belongs to a symbol on the physical reel that you see behind me, okay? We're not gonna get into that today, but I want you to understand that that is the part that is random. The part that is random is you do not know what is gonna come next when you do the spin, okay? That part is random. That is where you don't know, casino, manufacturer, game designer, all those people do not know what's gonna come next. That is the random aspect, and the reason it's that way is it has to be true and fair for everybody that's spinning. There's no bias involved, okay? But there is a control, and the control is that it only gives the random number generator certain things to pick from. Okay, so the best analogy I can think of is a deck of cards. Okay, we know 52 cards in the deck, right? So if I were to shuffle these real quick, okay, and then pull out one just at random, let's see what we end up with. Seven of hearts, okay? The act of me pulling that out was random. I did not know how they were shuffled or anything like that. That was a random event. Can we agree with that? Okay, good. So the control is, is that it had to be one of those 52 cards. Okay, so if the jackpot was a one in 52 chance of seven of hearts, then I won the jackpot, okay? Go back in, you're gonna spin it again. What you do is put the card back in, do a lot of shuffling. Again, computers can do this very fast, a lot of shuffling. Okay, I've just spun again and I'm gonna pull out another card and this time it's the two of diamonds. So I didn't get the jackpot again, but I could have. And the chances of hitting the jackpot were still one in 52, that did not change, okay? So it could take 52 chances, it could take 300, could take 600, could take five. There's gonna be variance on either side, but the odds are still the same every time I pull from the deck of cards. So slot machines are designed exactly the same way. So let's, let's uh, up the bet a little bit. Nice pun, right? So what happens with payback percentages, okay? When game designers sit down to create a slot machine game, they need to produce anywhere from three to 10 different payback percentage options for the casino to pick from whenever the casino is installing that game on their floor, okay? Um, it usually ranges anywhere from 83% on the low up to around 98% on the high, but there will be about five on average that the casino can pick from, okay? So what is actually going on there? What are the game designers doing to allow that percentage to actually occur? 
So it's actually very simple, and we're going to use the deck of cards as, a, as an example because I think this is a, the, the easiest way to understand it, at least for me it was. So imagine 52 cards in the deck. Okay, we've been using the example of the whole video, but 52 cards in this deck. Let's say that the king of clubs, for example, is the double diamond symbol. If we wanted to increase the payback percentage of this deck of cards, we would add an additional king of clubs to the deck. So now the RNG has two king of clubs to pick from instead of just one. So you can see how that has raised the payback percentage. It still could take a long time to get that king of clubs, but the payback percentage overall has been risen, okay? Now, let's say that they need to do the opposite. They need to create a game that is low in payback percentage. Well, they may take this king of clubs out and replace it with a lower paying or a blank, okay? So let's translate this to the actual slot machines and what's going on there. So imagine, you know, you have your reels here, double diamond, that's the example we've been using because it's really easy to understand. You have a big long reel that's even longer than the reels that you see here. But it has a lot of blanks, it has a lot of cherries, it has a lot of bars, but only a few of the higher paying symbols like double diamonds and seven, okay, red sevens. So what they do on that side is that the game designers will, if they need to create a high payback percentage version of the game, they will put more higher paying symbols in there and less blanks, okay? So that's why over time it will pay back more because there's more higher paying symbols for the RNG to pick from. If it's a lower pay, let's say they're doing the 83%, well, they will take a lot of those out. So there will be a lot more blanks, there'll be a lot more cherries, you know, instead of single bars, etc. So it's going to be weighted more on the lower end. But the RNG is still picking from that, and you don't know what's going to come next. Now, these things play out over a very long period of time, and that's why it's very difficult, if not impossible, for a human being in any short term to determine what the payback percentage is of a machine because it literally takes 10 million spins before these payback percentages finally kind of balance out and they do this just naturally because of the math behind it same thing with this okay just because i picked out a king of clubs twice on here doesn't mean that this deck of cards suddenly needs to rebalance itself and take that king of clubs out so i can't get it anymore that's that's not what's going on and it's not what's going on in the slot machine either i still had the same chances every single time uh, from a shuffle deck of cards of pulling out another king of clubs right same thing on a slot machine but over time as you can imagine, sometimes you can go very long strings without getting that king of clubs. Sometimes you can get it in rapid succession. That's why sometimes you see a lot of bonus rounds all of a sudden, and sometimes you don't see any. It's just about luck, randomness of you shuffling the cards and pulling out that particular symbol that turns into a win or a loss on a slot machine, okay? So I hope that help clears it up. Slot machines are random, but they also do have a control aspect to it. So anyway, hope that helps, guys. As always, gamble smart, gamble safe. Uh, we will see you tomorrow for Tuesday's tip. And as always, take care, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.